Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video, I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Abcellaris stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Abcellara is a biotechnology company that uses its proprietary database to research and develop human antibodies to address pandemics and common diseases. It utilizes its proprietary technology platform which develops medical countermeasures within 60 days. It is unheard of to do this within 60 days. Medical countermeasures are FDA regulated drugs that can be used in the event of a potential public health emergency stemming from a terrorist attack or naturally occurring disease. COVID is a good example of this. The company says drug development fails too often, takes too long, and costs too much money. That is due to limited technology and access to information. This company is going to solve those problems since they are more focused on the technology side as opposed to its competitors, which mainly focus on the medical side and lack the necessary technology skills to make the drug discovery process more efficient and streamlined. To drive my point home, it costs $3 billion and takes 10 years to develop the average antibody drug. Even with all that work, the failure rate is 90%. Abcellera develops partnerships with small, medium, and large drug companies. The drug company tells ABCL the idea for the therapeutic agent and ABCL performs the entire discovery process and validates the work. It then turns everything over to the drug company for clinical trials. It locks in royalty agreements with other companies, which creates a long and healthy revenue stream. 84% of its revenue in the first half of this year was from royalty payments. Its process is so advanced, the big, medium, and small pharma companies are willing to pay them an ongoing fee just to work with them. Each time ABCL works with a new company like Eli Lilly or Pfizer, its database becomes more thorough, advanced, and refined. The company's database becomes smarter and more valuable each day since it can combine the knowledge of the top biotech companies together to get the best product in the fastest time. In 2016, the company received a $645,000 grant from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation to develop a test for tuberculosis. Peter Thiel is the director of the company. He is the founder of PayPal and Palantir. He was also an early investor in Facebook. In early to mid-2020, the company announced it had begun the world's first study of a potential antibody treatment against COVID-19 in collaboration with Eli Lilly. It received final approval for its COVID-19 vaccine in December which was extremely fast and impressed the entire biologics community. The company also collaborates with GlaxoSmithKline, Novartis, Pfizer, Sanofi, Teva, and many more companies. Abcellera is headquartered in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada, and was founded in 2012. It went public in 2020 and trades on the NASDAQ and Deutsche Börse. Let's get started with the model. This is a mid-cap company, 5.8 billion market cap. They're trading at $21 a share, and they have 279 million shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future, and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. So they didn't have much in free cash flow in 2018, 19, and 20. Then it jumped way up to 219 million. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. That was low in 18 and 19. It jumped way up to 119 million in 2020, then way up to 229 million in the trailing 12 months. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that was only 9 million, and it grew 50 times to 448 million in the trailing 12 months. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Here's a breakdown of their revenue in the first half of 2021. They received almost as much revenue in the first half of 2021 as they did in all of 2020. So you can see they're growing at a really rapid pace. Their royalty revenue is a majority of it. Once they sign a royalty agreement, then it's guaranteed revenue coming in for many years. And the more agreements they sign, the more guaranteed revenue they receive. 
They also had 21 million of licensing fees, 9 million of research fees, and 8 million of milestone payments. Sometimes in the royalty agreement, they'll write in a milestone. Like for instance, if 1 million vaccines are sold, they'll receive $8 million. Below revenue is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. Revenue minus cost of revenue gives you your gross profit. And look how high their margins are. They had 400 million of gross profit from 450 million of revenue. Those are unbelievable margins. Below that is their operating expenses. Here's a breakdown of their operating expenses in the first half of 2021. They had $24 million of royalty fees because sometimes they pay others to help them during the discovery process. R&D is always going to be a really big expense for this company because that's mainly what they do. $4 million of marketing. They don't market to the end user, people like me and you. They market to other pharmaceutical companies. And their marketing is less than 1% of their revenue. The average pharmaceutical spends 10% of marketing. That's why their margins are so high, because they don't really need to market too much. They had 18 million of GNA expenses. GNA expenses are rent, insurance, and payroll. And they had 7 million of depreciation and amortization. Below operating expenses is their operating income, which was really small in 18 and 19. Now it's over $300 million. And then the bottom line of the income statement is their net income, which was 229 million in trailing 12 months nearly double 2020's number. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. So even when they weren't bringing in much revenue, they still had positive operating cash flow. That's how efficient this operation is. They had 46 million of CapEx in the trailing 12 months because sometimes they have to buy expensive computers to help them during the R&D process or to collect the data. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. So in 2018, 19, and 20, they really didn't have much free cash flow. So they ran their business on capital stock and debt. They issued 600 million of stock in 2020 and 100 million of debt. When a company issues capital stock, it dilutes the current shareholders, making your shares less valuable. So if you own $100 of stock before the dilution, after they did the capital raise, you were down to $80. So you might have been upset, you lost 20% of your stock. But then if you waited another year, your stock may have went up to $120. So you would have been happy, it went up 20% overall. But what if you waited a year and your stock was still down at $80? Then the stock dilution may have not panned out and they would have been better off keeping the business the way it was than diluting the shareholders and taking on that project. This is the equity section of their balance sheet. They have nearly $1 billion of equity. They raised over $700 million from selling their business. And they profited over $200 million from running their business. Retain earnings is a sum of all your prior net incomes. Let's look at the capital structure. $968 million of equity, $33 million of debt. They're 97% equity, 3% debt. And their net debt is $759 million. So they could pay off all the debt with the cash on their balance sheet and still have $759 million of cash left over. So they have a pretty solid balance sheet. Their weighted average cost of capital is 10% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's $15 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $12 billion. We divide that by 279 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $44. They're trading at $21, so they're trading at a 53% discount. It's a strong buy according to the model. So since this company is doing so well and growing so much, the way I projected their future revenue, I grew at 50% a year for the next four years. And that's how I got their future revenue numbers. To get their future free cash flow numbers, it seems like they're a really high margin business. They converted 48% of their revenue to free cash flow in the trailing 12 months. So I multiplied these revenue numbers by 48%. That's how I got my future free cash flow numbers. And pharmaceuticals tend to be high margin businesses. Once a drug is developed and approved by the FDA, then they receive tons of cash. And this company has even higher margins than a traditional pharmaceutical company. Because once they developed a formula for the vaccine or drug, they hand that over to the pharmaceutical company and they deal with the manufacturing and marketing. So AppSeller's business model is almost all margin. 
Three analysts priced this stock and the average price target was $37. So you can see when the stock started trading, it was up there, $50, $60 a share. But investors felt that was too high. Plus the company wasn't really bringing in much revenue and they definitely weren't getting much profits either. So a lot of people sold off and pushed the stock price real low. So it seems like a really great buying opportunity, especially if you felt bullish up here, you'd feel really bullish down here. And there are a lot of people who are dollar cost averaging down. If you get in now, you don't have to buy up here and dollar cost average down. You could buy it all down here. On July 20th, I had $10,000 of cash to invest. So I just looked at all the companies I was interested in and it seemed like this was at a really great value. So I bought this. But it's not like I had $10,000 back in February and I was waiting for this to go down. And then when it went down, I bought this. Whenever I have extra cash, I invest it. Of course, I don't invest in just anything. If I happen to have $10,000 of extra cash, say in January, I probably wouldn't have bought this stock. I would have found another stock. But I had 10,000 around here, so I thought it was a great value. When people say you have to buy the dips, I generally don't have money when there's dips. I don't just sit on cash and wait for dips. Whenever I have cash, I invest it. So in the past 52 weeks, their stock went down 64%, while the S&P went up 34%. The 52-week low was 15, the high was up to 72. And the stock is trading between its 50-day and 200-day moving average. Sometimes in investing, it's better to be lucky than smart. Like if you ran into a lot of cash right after the market crashed, like say you had a big inheritance of like $50,000 and then the market just crashed. You can invest all that money at the low point. Say another person who saved $50,000 over several years, analyzed the market every day and invested their extra money into the market. They would probably get a much worse return than you did just because you got lucky by running into that inheritance right after the market crashed. There's nothing wrong with getting lucky. I'm really happy when I get lucky, when I buy a stock that I'm not too sure about, that ends up running up a lot. About 3 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 279 million shares outstanding, 177 million are on float. When a share is on float, that means it's available for investors like me and you to purchase in the open market. The 100 million shares not on float are held by insiders and cannot be purchased by anyone. They could sell those shares though, but they're not available to be purchased on the open market. About half the shares are held by institutions and 8% of the shares on float are shorted. A bullish sign is when a company adds new employees. They had a little over 100 employees at the beginning of 2020. Now they tripled that, it's over 300 employees. So obviously there's demand if they're willing to pay people to work at their business. If you invested $10,000 into this company when they started trading, you would have lost about 65% of your investment, down to about $3,600 today. The CEO of the company, Carl Hansen, owns 20% of the stock. He was a multi-billionaire a few months ago. Now he's just a billionaire. Data Collective owns 8.7%, then Capital Research, Barker Brothers, and Peter Thiel owns 3.65%. I feel really comfortable when a smart investor like Peter Thiel is invested in a company I'm part of. Let's look at their financial ratios. Their PE is a little high. They just started bringing in net income. I'm sure this will look a lot better in a year or two. Their price of sales is 13. That's also a bit high. They do have a good price to book since they have so much cash on their balance sheet. Look at that return on invested capital, 122%. They bring great value to their investors. They can cover their interest payments almost 49 times. They have a really high ROE at 24%. And they have a really high current ratio and quick ratio. Certain companies like pharmaceuticals tend to keep a lot of cash on their balance sheet because they don't know how long it will take to develop a vaccine. It could take a week, a month, six months. So they need the cash to pay their employees. Where if you look at a company like Kraft Heinz, they have a general idea of how much they need to manufacture because retail customers give them purchase orders and they know how much it costs to make the products and how much they need to pay their employees. So they have a general sense. They don't need to keep a ton of cash on their balance sheet where this company doesn't have as much of an idea of how long it will take. They have a general sense, 
but it could be way different than what they think. Where Kraft Heinz, they also have a general sense, and it's pretty close to what they think. So you can see they have $800 million of cash on their balance sheet, so they're well capitalized. They had over $200 million of free cash flow in the trailing 12 months, almost $800 million of working capital, so they have over $1 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios to compare them to companies in the same industry, I've done videos of 17 companies in the same industry as ABCL, and their price multiples are pretty good relative to the average. Their PE is almost exactly average. They do have a better price to sales ratio because a lot of these companies aren't bringing in any revenue and they have a really good price to book relative to the average. They have a high current ratio. They have a positive ROE, the average is negative. If you're a pharmaceutical company, you're either losing a lot of money or making a lot of money. There's not really much in between. You're losing a lot of money while you're in the drug development process, but once you develop a drug, even if it's just one drug or vaccine, then you start making a lot of money. They're low in debt, and they are smaller than the average company, six billion market cap, they were a lot bigger a few months ago when the stock was $50, $60 a share, but it's come down a lot. But the stock price has come down a lot in the past few months, so it's a much better value than it was before. Because in the beginning of the year, when their market cap was much higher, they weren't bringing in much revenue. Now their market cap is much lower, and they're bringing in a ton of revenue. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 53% discount, and some people are saying this is a one-trick pony. Without the COVID vaccine, they'd be nothing. That is true, the COVID vaccine did catapult them to get their first revenue stream, but it's just a start. They have an amazing platform, great technology, much more advanced than every other biotech company. So I think this company is a really great future. I ranked their free cash flows eight out of 10, their revenue eight out of 10, and their ratio is five out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.